Hi, I'm Eric Voss, and we have a third new trailer for Spider-Man Homecoming. And because we apparently can't get enough of these, we also have a separate new international trailer that also came out. And between both of these trailers, there's actually a lot of new footage with a ton of interesting details. So I'm gonna go through and break down all the new stuff in this great domestic trailer, adding new interesting bits from the international one throughout. So let's get started. Finally, here we go. Good evening, Peter. Oh, you have 576 possible web shooter combinations. That is awesome. I can keep that suit? Yeah, it doesn't fit me. So when's our next retreat? What, next mission? We'll call you, all right? That's not a hug, I'm just grabbing the door for you. I'm oh. not there yet. All right, good. Good luck out there. Okay, so right away, this trailer shows off a new feature of Peter's stark design Spidey suit, an inner CPU with an AI voice and an augmented reality interface similar to the inside of Iron Man's helmet. Now, yeah, at first it seemed like this tech is a little too advanced for a Spider-Man's suit, which traditionally is supposed to have a more practical DIY kind of design. Like, Spider-Man isn't Iron Man for a reason. Being low budget is part of his charm. But I think this is all part of Peter's character arc in this movie. Like, we know from the last trailer that Stark confiscates his suit later on. And check out the way Peter says finally here. It's almost like he's been waiting all day to play with the suit. Like it's a video game that he can finally play after finishing his homework. So to Peter, this suit is like Overwatch. And then like many teenage gamers, Peter uses it to start shit with adults. And then father figure Tony Stark steps in and grounds him, takes Overwatch away from him. And then when Peter learns with great power comes great whatever, he becomes a man finally and invents his own damn Overwatch. See the classic coming of age tale. This opening section also shows us more of Peter and Stark in the back seat. And I feel like we've seen so many pieces of this scene in each trailer, and that could mean that they actually shot a lot of alternate dialogue and jokes for the scene. Like you may have noticed in recent years that trailers have included slightly different dialogue than the versions of these scenes in the final theatrical release. Nowadays, directors will shoot some takes solely for the marketing people who assemble the trailer like, remember that shot of Jen Erso in the first Rogue One teaser, which Gareth Edwards apparently got just by yelling Felicity Jones' name on set and recording her reaction. Yo, Felicity, we gotta make a trailer. Anyway, I know I obsess over the exact footage that are in these trailers, but I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that this movie will feel new and surprising when we see it in theaters. Cool, let's move on. Hey, Peter. You coming tonight? I can tonight. I got the Stark internship. What's up, guys? Mr. Stark, here's my report for tonight. I stopped the uh, Grand Theft Bicycle. Hey, could you do me a favor? Hold on to that. Is this anybody's bike? Oh, I helped this old lady and she bought me a churro, so. That was nice. Okay, here we see some more shots of Peter as a typical high school nerd that we saw in past trailers, but also a few new examples of him as a local friendly neighborhood Spider-Man catching a bike thief and bragging that an old lady bought him a churro. And what I like most about this is how not a big deal Spider-Man is. Like notice how he's not an Avenger level celebrity that people are trying to take selfies with. In fact, when we hear a camera snap as he poses by the subway platform, I don't see anyone on that platform taking the photo. Like this is probably just one of his own cameras that he rigged up ahead of time to take pictures of himself. So this is just such a fun, grounded, tonal choice for the movie. Like, even as a superhero with a really cool suit, he's still a loser. Hey, uh, look at me, let me save you. Meanwhile, all these jaded New Yorkers are just like, oh, what, this little loser thinks he's his old metal face and a green fatty? Eh, get out of here. Like, even Tony Stark won't take his calls. He just leaves these voicemails documenting the friendly neighborhood bullshit that he did that day that Stark probably never even listens to. Now, the internet National trailer actually opens with Peter keeping these geeky records in a totally different way. Vlogging, shooting behind the scenes footage of the airport battle in Civil War. It also shows him gushing about it in the hotel room afterward as Happy interrupts him. And notice here that the web shooters that Peter is wearing on his wrist look different from the web shooters that we saw him wearing under his clothes in Captain America Civil War. These of course are the new Tony Stark upgraded ones with 576 different web shooter combinations. He's probably gonna wear these all the time. Just uh, Peter be a little careful that you don't wear them. Out. Now, the question I have about all this is if Peter wants to keep his identity secret, why is he vlogging about this stuff with his mask off? So I guess this could be like a private video journal that he keeps for himself, but I have a theory that he could be making these videos to confide all these amazing experiences with someone, maybe his deceased Uncle Ben, like this is how he keeps his memory alive. Or maybe Peter just thinks when people die they live in computers. Let's move on. 
I just feel like I could be doing more. Wait a minute. You guys aren't the real Avengers. Hulk gives it away. New move I'm working on. Not bad. Oh. God, this feels so strange. Oh. Hey These weapons are crazy dangerous. Okay, so here we see more of this foiled ATM robbery and more of the advanced tech that these criminals are using. This weapon looks kind of like the gravity gun from Half-Life 2. And we start to see how this repurposed advanced weaponry is becoming a problem in this movie. Like this guy totally loses control of the laser as it slices through the entire block. And we learn that that's what causes the deli to explode. So the international trailer actually goes into more of the background on this. It includes a shot of Michael Keaton's character, Adrian Tumis, the vulture, and if you look closely at the shot, this is in New York's Grand Central Station, probably shortly after the Battle of New York in Avengers. Tumis is hacking away at a Chitauri chariot, and in the background, you can see a dead Leviathan. Actually, this is probably the same Leviathan brought down by Hulk and Thor in that battle. So I'm guessing that this footage is from a flashback showing how Tumis and his crew acquired all this tech. They're the guys who show up to clean up whatever big Avengers conflict and then gather all the scraps like Left behind by Chitari, Ultron's minions, Hydra controlled Hello Carriers. And then they use those scraps to build new weapons that they can't really control. So, like Civil War, this movie is using the consequences of past events in the MCU to establish the conflict of this film, which is a really economical way to craft a story. All right, let's move on. Listen, Peter, there are people who handle this sort of thing. Can't you just be a friendly neighborhood Spider Man? <laughs> Parachute. Okay, so a few really interesting things here. First, there's this shot of Peter as he watches Stark take off in a jet from Avengers HQ. And check out this Avengers logo behind him. Framing the A and the circle behind his shoulder almost makes it look like a number four, kind of like the Fantastic Four logo. Now, in the past, I pointed out how this scene kind of feels like that classic Spider-Man comic where Spider-Man breaks into the Fantastic Four headquarters in the comics trying to be part of their team. Like, I'm wondering if Peter is now doing that with the Avengers. But this might be an an actual Fantastic Four Easter egg here. Marvel Studios head Kevin Feige has admitted that his long-term goal is to eventually reacquire all Marvel properties, Spider-Man, X-Men, the Fantastic Four, Sinister Six, and co-producing Spider-Man with Sony seems like the first step in this broad homecoming mission. So maybe if we're really lucky, sometime after the Infinity War dust settles, who knows, Peter Parker and Reed Richards and Bruce Banner could go on a really nerdy road trip together. Okay, next, the Vulture surprises Spider-Man by snatching him out of this neighborhood, and I feel like this might be the first encounter between these characters. Like, if you look closely, Peter is clearly chasing this white van, and then it seems like the Vulture is pulling him away from it. So maybe this van contains more stolen weapons parts, and the Vulture doesn't want Spider-Man interfering. But then, if you listen closely to this part, they did some cool things with the sound mixing. For one, that jet engine roar kind of sounds like the TIE Fighter from Star Wars. But also, when Tumis looks down at Peter with these menacing green eyes, this noise that he makes this is actually the sound a real wild vulture makes. Listen. So I just love how the sound guys are using actual natural effects to heighten Peter's fear in this moment. All right, moving on. The world's changing, boys. It's time we change too. This is my chance to prove myself. We have a Spanish quiz. You gotta get better at this part of the job. I don't understand. No! Oh, I'm intimidating. Oh, hey, guys. Okay, so some big things to point out here. One, I like this joke from Ned that Peter shouldn't save the world because they have a Spanish quiz. Again, it seems like this movie is gonna be really good at grounding Peter's life as a superhero in his mundane high school priorities. And then after more shots of him fighting Bokeem Woodbine's character in the school bus yard, we get this quick exchange with Miles Morales, I mean, um, Donald Glover. You gotta get better at this part of the job. I still have hope that someday they'll cast Donald Glover as the Morales version of Spider-Man. But this is interesting because it seems here that Glover is playing a friendly character to Peter. Like in the first teaser, Glover seemed to be aligned with some of the more nefarious characters. So maybe he like switches sides to become more of an ally to Peter. Or maybe just like we saw Tumis do in past trailers, he's lecturing Peter on how to pick his battles. Also, I enjoy this moment of the glitching eyepieces freaking out these girls in the tent. And Peter looks especially freaky wrapped up in these outdoor lights, which he probably crashed through. They kind of look like those motion tracking dots that they put on actors for visual effects mapping. And yeah, that behind the scenes footage always looks pretty terrifying. I kill wherever I please. Ugh, yikes. Um, let's move on. My friends are up there. Hey, where are you going? 
What are you hiding, Peter? I'm just kidding, I don't care. Bye. So this section here shows more of this Washington Monument attack, which I've actually dissected in past trailer breakdowns, so go check those out. But I like how now the action and the music suddenly ends in this abrupt jump cut to Michelle, who's Zendaya's character in a study group, demanding to know where Peter's running off to. Hey, where are you going? And in case you didn't notice, Peter's clothes here kind of tell us when all this action takes place. Like, check out his I Lost an Electron t-shirt. It's the same one that he wears when he meets with Stark in Avengers HQ. So the reason he's running off is probably because, you know, surrogate daddy's calling. Also, this shot of Peter taking off his tie is probably him running out of his homecoming dance, suggesting that that kiss with Liz Allen that the other trailers have hinted at probably won't happen. Or if it does, it won't last long. There's also a shot from the fairy scene of this one dude cheering Spider-Man on. And notice how the rest of the passengers are still freaked out and look at this guy like he's crazy. Now again, Peter isn't used to this kind of fan attention, so I think this one cheer will go to his head, causing him to think he can take on these fairy arms dealers on his own, leading to the vulture showing up and splitting the fairy in half, and an Iron Man needing to come in and save Peter's ass, and the asses of all these innocent bystanders. Now the international trailer shows more of this sequence, including this awesome shot of Vulture using his wings to snip Spider-Man's webbing. So just like the last trailer, when and the vulture used his wings to grab and suspend Peter in the air. It looks like he can use these things kind of like how Doc Ock used his claws in Spider-Man 2. Also, keep in mind that Peter's webbing is supposed to be incredibly strong, with an estimated tensile strength of 120 pounds per square millimeter of cross-section. That's similar to the strength of a low-end steel cable. So vulture's wings being able to cut it here means that these wing blades must be pretty freaking sharp. Okay, let's move on to this final section. There's a ton of other subsystems in here, but they're all disabled by the training wheels protocol. I'm sick of Mr. Stark treating me like a kid. But you are a kid. Yeah, a kid who can stop a bus with his bare hands. Okay, so here, in case you couldn't tell what this was, this rubbery texture that looks like a motherboard is actually the inside of Spider-Man's mask. And I love the detail they designed into it and the fact that Peter has to wear this against his face. Now, Peter and Ned try to hack into the mask and they learn that most of the features have been locked by Stark under the training wheels protocol. There's a few things I like about this. One, just knowing that the suit has all of these features seems to be setting up Peter being able to suddenly use all these awesome abilities at some point later on, kind of like Chekhov's Spider-Man suit. But also, Peter's whiny reaction here, complaining that Stark treats him like a kid, while Peter's literally jumping up and down on a bed. This is another example of how this movie parallels Peter's suit with something like a video game. It's like he put in the game and all the best characters and missions haven't been unlocked yet. And the trailer ends with some shots of Peter trying to sully this crashing cargo plane over Manhattan. But the international trailer actually gives us more context for what's going on here. Take a look. Got a plane full of brand new Avengers weaponry to load up. We're gonna put them out of business. We're gonna take everything they got. You're not gonna stop me. So yeah, Stark is shipping weaponry from Avengers Tower, which Tumis plans to steal mid-flight, kind of like Bane. And what exactly is on this plane? Well, if you look closely at this cargo bay shot, those crates have DODC written on them. Department of Damage Control, a government branch of this Avengers battle cleanup operation that Stark is supplying tech to, which Vulture plans to steal because that would cut into his private business. So check out that Iron Man suit in the background. That kind of looks like a Mark 42, which I know is a bit confusing because the Mark 42 and all the other previous marks got destroyed in Iron Man 3. Still, we do know that Stark just kept building new Iron Man armor anyway, and he'll have new armor for Infinity War, so maybe this suit on the plane is just some alternate model that he plans to transport for storage. Either way, I don't know if Vulture would fit in that Iron Man suit. He's a big guy. For you. Ugh, come on. Stay out of this bane. So I'm curious what you guys think about these trailers and Spider-Man Homecoming, specifically these lingering questions that I still have. One, do you think Peter's suit is too Iron Man-y? Like, it's kind of an interesting debate, right? Like, it's great that Iron Man and Spider-Man are in a movie together, but is Iron Man's influence too much? Like, I agree that the most recent poster was kind of rough. Like, huh, do you think Iron Man is in this? But really, I trust director John Watts and Kevin Feige, and I do think that the Stark techie video game suit will be a key part of Peter Parker's growth from teen to adult. And two, do you want Marvel to be back in control of the film rights of all of its 
its properties. Like, I'm totally with Kevin Feige when it comes to Spider-Man and the Fantastic Four. I think both of those franchises are long overdue for a homecoming to Marvel. But like, when it comes to the X-Men, I don't know. Overall, I've been pretty happy with what Fox has done with the property. Especially recently, Deadpool and Logan are like two of the best superhero movies ever. And I just don't know if Marvel would have allowed those movies to be so stylistically different and edgy and R-rated. Like, sure, I was bummed that the X-Men weren't part of the Civil War movie. I'm just saying that diversity of storytelling within a genre can be a good thing. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. And if you like this video, please hit like and subscribe to New Rockstars. And if you really like us, you can contribute to us on Patreon. Thanks so much to all of our current patrons, especially Pony Stark. You can hit me up on Twitter, at EA Voss, with any thoughts or theories that you have about Spider-Man Homecoming, or follow New Rockstars on Twitter, at New Rockstars, for updates on our videos. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.